وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا Allah is ordering the fear of the day of judgment, the fear of the hereafter. And why fear the day of judgment? And why fear and plan for the hereafter? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then gives four basic state of affairs which will be prevailing on the day of judgment. The first is la tajzi nafsun an nafsin shay'a that no soul will replace for another soul in any form or the other. This means what? That no person will be able to benefit any other person on the day of judgment. As Allah says in Quran, Yawma yafirul mar'u min akhi wa ummihi wa abi wa swahibatihi wa bani. On the day of judgment, people will, the bondsmen, they will try to escape. They will try to run away from from his brother, from his mother and father, from his spouse, from his wife, and from his children. Because nobody is going to, nobody is going to gain from anybody. Everybody is going to gain or avail from their own deeds. As Allah says in Quran, Laha ma qasabat wa alayha ma qasabat. For everybody is what they have earned themselves out of their virtuous deeds. Allah says in Quran, Laisal insana illa ma sa'a. There's nothing for a person except for what he has struggled and strived and worked hard for to perform the virtuous deeds. And you know what? This is only fair. This is only fair because if we try to work out what is the rule in this worldly life? All the students, all the students who appear in an examination, they, they get the result of their own hard work. No student gets the result due to the hard work or the study of his brother or his sister or one of his near or dear friends. Let me give you an example. There are two friends and they, they appeared in a maths exam and one of them turned out and they and he got a score of 100 by 100 and the other other friend he just failed scoring 25 out of 100 now just tell me does it ever happen that the that the friend who had scored 100 out of 100 goes up to the teacher and he comes up with the suggestion that madam you can take out 10 marks from my score and give it to my friends so that he can pass with a score of 35 out of 100. I don't have any issue. I can, I can easily manage with a slightly lower score of 90 by 100 or so. Can any student make such a suggestion? Can any student make such a suggestion or a request? Or has any student or will any student, however close, however loving friend he is, has ever, has ever such a request or suggestion been made? Or will any teacher accept any such request or suggestion? So if it has never happened and it will never happen and it is just not acceptable or possible, then how can we imagine that on the day of the judgment, the fairest ruler, the ruler, fairest of all the rulers, the judge, the judge who is who is the most fair of all the judges will allow such an interchange and transaction? No, this is not definitely not going to be possible on the day of judgment. We need to remember that no daughter will be, no daughter will be allowed to enter the Jannah just because her mother was pious. No father will be forgiven if the son was very virtuous. Don't we know that Hazrat Lut alayhi salam's wife, Hazrat Nu alayhi salam's wife, Hazrat Nu alayhi, salam, uh, Nu alayhi salam's son, Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam's father, they were not forgiven. 
they were not forgiven. No one will be forgiven or will be rewarded on account of deeds of his near or dear ones. That is what the first part of the word says. Nobody, no exchange, no barter of deeds will happen on the day of judgment. And then the second thing is, which Allah mentions, no intercession will be accepted also. The concept of intercession, this needs to be understood and it needs to be corrected and rectified because there is a lot of misconception about this concept of intercession. Prophet will be the first and the most to intercede. As he said, he's been reported to say, he said that I am Muhammad, I am Ahmad, I am Hashir, I am Aqib. He mentioned a few of his names and this means what? That he is the praised one and he will be the, he will be the prophet after which there will be the day of judgment. Aqib means that there will be no prophet or no messenger after him and between him and the day of judgment. And Hashir means that after him will be the Hashir. And Hashir also means and refers to that he will be the first to be raised on the day of judgment. And we know that the Prophet will be, will be the first to be raised on the day of judgment. And then Hazrat Ibrahim salam, although Hazrat Ibrahim salam, will be dressed and clothed before Prophet And Prophet has also told us that he will be the first to reach the grounds on the day of judgment. And there he will reach on the river of Qathar. And there he will recognize the people of his ummah, his followers by, by the parts of the body which will be shining because of their evolution and wuzu. And he will recognize them. And then he will give them water and all the followers who will drink the water of the river of Qathar, Prophet said that anyone who will drink the, the sweet, the water of the river of the Qathar will be like what? Prophet said, it will be as white as milk and it will be even more sweeter than honey and it will be more cool, cooler than ice. And Prophet has reported to tell us that anybody who will drink it on the day of judgment, he will never feel thirsty. And any person who will be deprived of this water of the river of Qathar, then his thirst will never quench. And Prophet has also warned us that there will be people whom he will recognize as his followers, but he will see that the angels will be stopping the people from reaching out to the Prophet And Prophet said, that I will recognize them as my followers and I will recognize them as people of my ummah, but I will see that they will, be, they will be stopped from reaching out to me and I will ask them that why are they being stopped? And I will be told and I will be informed that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you do not know that after you, after you, these were the people who had indulged in innovations and bidah. And then because of committing innovations, they will be deprived of the water of the river of Qawthar and they will be deprived of the intercession of the Prophet That is why we need to understand what intercessions and bid'ah are. Prophet said, Kullu muhtasatin bid'atun, kullu bid'atin zalala, kullu zalala finnar. All things which are not in religion and they are fabricated and they are created and they are innovated, they are bidda. And all the bidda are what? They are, they are misguiding. And all the things which are misguiding, they will be in fire, in hellfire. Allahumma ajirna minan nar. 
Prophet Sallallahu has also warned us that anyone who respects and regards and honors a person indulging in innovations and committing bidha, Prophet Sallallahu said, Laisa minna, he is not from among us. The person participating and indulging in innovations and bidha will not be considered as a follower of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So how will there be intercession on the day of judgment? There is a lengthy hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu in which he informed that every prophet was, uh, was granted a supplication which would be accepted in this world. And Prophet Sallallahu said that all the prophets made a supplication and they asked for something in the world, in their worldly life. But Prophet Sallallahu postponed his supplication for the day of judgment. And what will he ask for on the day of judgment? What his supplication will be on the day of judgment? He explained. He explained that when on the day of judgment, there will be the accountability will start, then people will be worried and they will go to the different prophets First of all, they will go to Hazrat Adam salam, and they will ask Hazrat Adam salam, to intercede for, for them. And Hazrat Adam salam, will refuse and he will say that because of the forbidden plant which I, which I ate and I consumed, I'm worried about myself. And I'm, I myself, I don't know what will be my accountability. So you go to Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam, and they will come to Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam. And then Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam will also refuse intercession and he will refer them to Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam. And then the people will come to Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam and they will request for his intercession saying that you were the Khalilullah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had blessed you with his friendship. Now please intercede for us. And Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam will say what? That I had committed a Torah a toria in my life. And toria is what? It is a statement which although it, it is a statement which is true, but it creates, it is a statement which is false. It is a false statement, but it gives the effect of a truth. So it is a false statement basically. So he will be worried about that. And he will say that I cannot intercede for you when you go to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam and they will approach Hazrat Musa alayhi salam and they will say that you are Kalimullah. You were Kalimullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly conversed with you and you had conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now please, please make intercession for us. And then Hazrat Musa alayhi salam will say, he will mention that I had I killed a person and I'm worried about my own soul. Nafsi, nafsi will all what all the prophets and messengers will be calling out. And then they will they will approach as Isa alayhi salam and they will ask him and request him for his intercession. And Hazrat Isa alayhi salam will say that I know that my after after when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lifted me to heavens, my people, my followers, they started worshiping me and they leveled me to the rays of Allah and they started calling me by the name of son of Allah and they my followers they indulged in polytheism and associated me as a partner of Allah and a son of Allah so I'm worried for myself nafsi nafsi and then people will come to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam for intercession and he will intercede and in other words, it is reported that how Prophet Sallallahu will intercede. The words of a Sahih and a lengthy hadith tell us that after all the people, the judgment of all the people would have, will have been taken and completed, then Prophet Sallallahu will make a prostration, a lengthy prostration. He will go in sajada. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will address him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, raise, his, raise your head and ask what you want. And then Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will say, Ya Allah, Ummati, 
oh Allah, my followers. Just imagine, just stop and think here on the day of judgment, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask him, ask what you want. He will not ask or seek forgiveness for Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, his beloved daughter, or Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, whom he loved the most amongst his wives and lovingly called Ash, no. Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, he had told in his life, he had informed and warned in his life, Ya Fatima in kazi nafsiki min nar fa inni la amliku min Allah, fa inni la amliku min Allah shayyan. Oh Fatima, you prepare, you prepare to save yourself from hal fire, for I will not be able to, I will not be able to plead and protect you from hell fire. So here, Prophet will say, What? Ya Allah, Ummati. Just imagine how much, how much he will, he will, and he does love everybody, all of us. And how much he will care for each one of us. And how much he will be bothered for the protection of all of us. So just let's ask all of us, do we love him all that much? Do we, do we work? Do we struggle? Do we strive to protect, to establish the religion, the book of Allah? which he loved. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make us one of those who strive and struggle from day and night to implement the teachings of Prophet Sallallahu beloved, beloved Quran and his beloved theme. Make us one of those who strive and struggle and work hard day and night to protect the teachings and to spread the teachings of the Quran out of love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you know, intercession is a fact and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will allow intercession. But what we need to understand is the actual concept of intercession, the conditions for intercessions, who will intercede? This will be strictly with Allah's permission and will as Allah says, in Ayatul Kursi, the discretion to grant the right to intercede will only and only be by the order and permission of Allah. The second point, who will be interceded or who will receive intercession will also be strictly by the permission of Allah only. The third point, the sole discretion to accept or reject any intercession also lies with Allah alone. And the fourth point we need to understand regarding intercession is that the receiver of intercession, that is the person for whom intercession is being made, the receiver of intercession will have to be a believer in the oneness of Allah. Intercession will only and only be accepted in the favor of a person who will not, who would not have indulged in any form of polytheism. So in natural, if I summarize, who will intercede? For whom will be intercession accepted? For what intercession will be accepted? When and how much of intercession will be accepted? will all be how? Be idhnillah, by the orders of Allah. So the polytheistic belief about intercession that the walis and the qutubs and the alims and the saints, they will intercede before Allah on the day of judgment for anyone, for everyone, for anything they would wish. This is not right. And this having this concept about intercession, this amounts to polytheism. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to honor his prophets, his messengers, the martyrs in the path of Allah, the reciters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to honor all of these will allow them intercession. 
but for whom they will intercede, for which matter would they intercede, for which event they would intercede, that would be just according to the permissions and the orders and the limits of Allah, nothing more than that. And we also learn that Quran and the fast will also be a source of intercession. From hadith we learn that Prophet ﷺ has been reported to say that on the day of judgment, Quran will intercede and Quran will say that I, I stopped or I prevented them from sleeping and the fast will intercede and the fast will say that I stopped or I prevented them from eating and drinking. And Prophet ﷺ said that their intercession will be accepted. And similarly, we also learn that Surah Baqarah and Surah Al-Imran, Az-Zahrawain, these two main surahs of Quran will also intercede on the day of judgment. And Prophet Sallallahu said that their intercession will be accepted. Now, ittaqu yawman, fear the day because no replacement of good deeds or inter interchange or transaction of good deeds. Second points, no intercession will be accepted. In the third point, Allah says, Wala adulun. Nor will any compensation be taken from the person. It means what? There will be no compensation that we will not be able to pay off any form of ransom or any form of uh, cash or kind to get away from the torments of hellfire. And the fourth point is that they will not be aided. So now if I sum up in this verse number 48, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning four things, four things which will not be a source of escape from the torments of hellfire or from the punishments of the day of judgment. And you know why these four things are being mentioned? Because in this worldly life, in this worldly life, the criminals usually resort to four methods of escape after committing any crime. And these methods generally which the criminals resort to for escape of punishment is their personal contacts, their links or approaches or intercessions that somebody pleading for their release or some bribe to get away. So that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah the just, the master of the day of judgment is warning us that the worldly tactics of escaping will not be possible. The only and only source of escape from the torments of hellfire and from the punishments of the day of judgments will be faith, belief, and good deeds. Inna lazina amanu wa amilu swali hati. There is no doubt that those who believe, they have faith, and then they do virtuous deeds. Only these will the people, these will be the people who will be rewarded with the with the gardens of Jannah, with the gardens of paradise, and they will be there forever. <laughs>